rotational kinetic energy is it's it's really kinetic energy and we just put it in different terms so that it's easier to write down it's still one half mv squared but the deal is the mass is moving in a circle instead of uh, in a straight line and the speed that the mass moves at well it depends on how far you are from the center right um, this piece right here this spindle excuse me spoke right here is not moving as fast as what's going on out here because it's closer to the center it's got the same angular speed omega it's moving you know uh, let's see one, one second two about one revolution or two revolutions let's see one revolution every two seconds so they're moving at the same angular velocity but as you move further out you got to go further to get through it so rotational kinetic energy is tough because it doesn't just depend on how on how much mass you have but where the mass is distributed now the simplest case is if I've got all the mass out here and uh, for the wheel uh, the spokes are very light most of the mass is out here so it's almost as if I've got one object moving at a certain distance uh, let's call it um, oh, 20 centimeters so it's all moving out here at 20 centimeters well, let me write that down we've got something so for kinetic energy rotational kinetic energy is given by EK. I'll use the simplest case where you've got just the wheel and all the mass is out here a certain distance. It's all the same radius. So you remember that kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared. Well if you go back to, to the end of uh, physics one we talked about rotational rates uh, and linear rates and show that velocity is equal to radius times angular velocity. This is towards the end of the first physics course. If I plug that in to here because I'm moving in a, in a uh, rotational mode then I get, if I put these together, I get the kinetic energy is one half the mass times the radius squared times the angular velocity squared. And what we do with the rotational kinetic energy is we group this. This is now kind of a mass term. It's called the moment of inertia. And what it says is it doesn't just matter what the mass is. It matters how far that mass is away from the radius because it's going to have different speed. All right. So we get kinetic energy is one half moment of inertia times angular velocity squared. That I stands for moment of inertia. So say I is the moment of inertia. Just like mass, mass measures an object's tendency to want to keep going. The more mass it has, the harder it is to change its direction. Well, moment of inertia is the circular equivalent of that. Moment of inertia is an object's tendency to want to keep rotating. And you know, if you move the mass further out from the center and spin it up to the same speed, it's going to want to keep rotating more than if it's towards the middle. So moment of inertia. I'm going to give you three different moments of inertia that we'll test you on. So one, if all mass, if all the mass, let's, let's say that, if all the mass is at a distance r from the center of rotation, and that can be, you've got one object right there moving around at a distance r, or I can take that mass and I can spread it out. Just as long as it's all that same distance, doesn't matter. Then the moment of inertia 
is just what I described here for the wheel. It's mass times radius squared. Now, for a solid disk, for a solid disk, it's like if I took all the mass rotating here, it's all out of mR squared. But if I could move that mass, spread it out so it moves down into here too, so it's a solid disk, I wouldn't have as much mass out here. So the moment of inertia would be smaller, a lot of it would be a smaller radius. So a solid disk would be like this, would be like a flywheel, or I can make it wider if I rotate this pen right here. That's a solid disk rotating. Some of the mass is out of the radius r, some of it's towards the center. So for a solid disk, and these are in the back of your book, moment of inertia is one half mr squared, almost like an average between r and zero. You got one half mr squared. And finally, three for a solid sphere. Usually I have a solid sphere in my pants somewhere, but not today. But if I've got a solid sphere rotating, well imagine I took mr squared for the hoop and I pulled mass in so it was a solid disk, so I went down to one half mr squared. Now take a disk and fold the size down so you can make a sphere, you're losing even more moment of inertia. For a solid sphere, the moment of inertia is two-fifths less than half mr squared, mass times radius squared. So these are three moments of inertia. Moments of inertia are hard to calculate. You need calculus for most of it. So you have a, a table that, that lists, you know, gives you pictures and lists different moments of inertia. I'm just going to work with three. Uh, a hoop, where all the mass is out at R, or just one object that's in orbit. Or a solid disk, where you've got one half mr squared or a solid sphere, two-fifths mr squared. So let's use this wheel for our example. By the way, I'll remind you, angular velocity, you can find it at the end of physics one, but it's in radians per second or revolutions per minute. It's the rate at which you move out, move through an angle. So let's see, an example. I've got a spinning wheel and I'm going to assume that pretty much all the mass is out here at a distance r. And let's let that distance, this is about 20 centimeters, and the mass is about a kilogram, and it's moving at, let's see, one sec, two, eh, that's about one and a half revolutions per second. That's 2 pi's, 3 pi's, yeah, 12, let's say 12 radians per second. So, let's see, well, one and a half revolutions per second times 60, that would be 90. 90 revolutions per minute. We should, I figure we should probably do a conversion. 90 RPM, this is given by omega, or also known as butt cheeks. So then, uh, First off, let's calculate the moment of inertia. Moment of inertia is equal to the mass times the radius squared, which is a problem because I've got centimeters. Let me get that into meters. There's one meter per hundred centimeters, and you get 0 0.20 meters. So I've got uh, one kilogram times uh, 0 0.20 meters. And that is squared, and that is 0 0.040 kilogram meters squared. Units for moment of inertia, maybe if, you, if you're taking notes, you can put this right in here. There'll be mass times distance squared, so kilogram meters squared, or slugs times feet squared.